Our radiographic entity was ameloblastoma by Mitch Knudsen. And Elizabeth Sand. Ameloblastomas are a slow-growing, benign, odontogenic tumor found in the maxilla or the mandible. As an odontogenic neoplasm, ameloblastomas arise from odontogenic epithelium, but contrary to the name, they do not arise from ameloblasts. The exact origin is actually unknown. Ameloblastomas are further categorized into solid multicystic, unicystic, or desmoplastic types. Although benign and slow-growing, ameloblastomas are known to be aggressive by locally infiltrating into nearby bone marrow. Clinical symptoms of ameloblastomas. They are typically, patients with ameloblastomas are typically asymptomatic, with most cases being diagnosed due to incidental findings during a dental exam. This is because the mucosa over the lesion is normal, and no symptoms arise until other structures are affected. If symptoms are present, patients most often complain of a painless, slow-growing swelling. In large ameloblastomas, pain or paresthesia from sensory nerve impingement, loose teeth, a change in occlusion, or a denture no longer fitting can be described by the patient. Clinical signs may include facial asymmetry, malocclusion, and unerupted third molars. On palpation of the enlargement, a crepitus may be felt from the thin cortical plate of bone remaining. Ameloblastomas are most often an incidental radiographic finding. And the picture just so shows a patient with facial asymmetry due to some swelling in her lower right mandible. Demographics for ameloblastomas. Males have a slight predilection for ameloblastomas. It may be found at any age, but most patients are between 20 and 50 years old. Blacks develop them more often with Afro-Caribbean populations having the highest incidence. Annual incidence rates per million people for, for ameloblastomas are 1.96, 1.2, 0.18, and 0.44 for black males, females, and white males, females respectively. Ameloblastomas make up 1% of all head and neck neoplasms in the U.S. and Europe and about 11% of all odontogenic tumors. For radiographic findings, the location, ameloblastomas present in the mandible and the maxilla 80% and 20% of the time respectively, and the third molar region is affected most often. They are localized and unilateral until they have expanded into other areas. The lesion can appear to originate from the occlusal of a developing tooth in the jaw. For the edge, the border is typically well-defined and often has a corticated border because of the slow growth. Maxillary lesions may be more ill-defined but well-localized. The shape is generally round to ovoid with a scallop shape when roots of teeth are involved in the lesion. The internal structure can be unilocular and completely radiolucent or multilocular, which may seem to have a soap bubble or honeycomb appearance. Radiopacity within the lesion shows mineralized tissue and is inconsistent with an ameloblastoma diagnosis. Ameloblastomas impact many structures when the lesion expands into their location. The tumor can cause extensive root resorption, tooth displacement, either occlusally for erupted teeth or apically for unerupted teeth, expansion and thinning or porphyration of the cortical plate, and destruction of the mandibular canal. Most commonly, they present as single lesions. Multi-lesions are possible, but not likely. And the size depends on the amount of time the tumor has been allowed to grow before treatment. A virtually unlimited size can be attained. It's not uncommon to involve the whole right or left half of the mandible. Differential interpretations. There are multiple differential diagnoses for ameloblastomas. The biopsy should be performed to identify and differentiate the lesion histologically. The first differential interpretation is odontogenic keratosis. These lesions resemble ameloblastomas radiographically, however they appear at different stages in life. Odontogenic keratosis typically are less expansive than ameloblastomas and have curved septa in the lesion. Ameloblastomas show significant buckled jaw swelling, unlike that of the keratosis. The second differential interpretation is odontogenic myxomas. Odontogenic myxomas grow along the bone, but are not as expansive as ameloblastomas. They usually contain only one or two thin, sharp septa, 
These typically show scalloping around the margins and may have a soap bubble appearance. The third differential interpretation is an ossifying fibroma. Wide, granular, ill-defined septa with small ir irregular trabeculae are characteristic of the ossifying fibromas. These lesions look radiolucent radiographically, but turn out to be solid after removal. For small or unicystic lesions, a more conservative approach may be enucleation or marsupialization. Radical resection of the head and neck tumor should be done for multicystic or aggressive ameloblastomas. The resection should extend one centimeter beyond the radiographic margins and involve immediate reconstruction. It is important that the end result of treatment is both functionally and aesthetically acceptable to the patient. Radiation therapy may be an option for treatment. It is a less radical approach. Historically, ameloblastomas were considered radioresistant, and the use of radiotherapy brought concern of radionecrosis. However, more recently, radiotherapy has provided palliative treatment for inoperable lesions. Depending on the size of the lesion and the impact on surrounding structures, the final treatment with the best outcome will be decided by the surgeon. This could range from enucleation to a large resection of the mandible based on the previ previously described indications. Key points. Ameloblastomas are benign tumors of odontogenic origin. They are difficult to distinguish from dentigerous cysts. Lesions are typically found in the mandible and more common in men and African Americans. Radiographically, ameloblastomas appear as radiolucent lesions. Ameloblastomas can be unilocular or multilocular and can be quite extensive with a corticated border. Ameloblastomas are found incidentally on radiographs. Signs and symptoms may include pain or paresthesia from sensory nerve impingement, loose teeth, facial asymmetry, swelling, and malocclusion. Treatment depends on the severity of the tumor. Surgical resection with immediate reconstruction is warranted for aggressive ameloblastomas, whereas enucleation or marsupialization are recommended for unilocular or small lesions. It is important to have the tissue that is removed biopsied for a definitive diagnosis. Here are our resources and the image credits.